Hello and welcome to Inventing Civilization, the YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the history of political thought and philosophy. In this episode, Niccolo Machiavelli. Some might say that Machiavelli is the most misunderstood political philosopher. The problem is that his writings reveal two contradictory views on politics, but more on that later. Niccolo Machiavelli was born in 1469 in Florence, which was a wealthy and bustling city-state. He had a remarkably stellar career in the city's government, obtaining various high posts. The city had been ruled by the Medici family, but they were briefly forced from power by a coup. When the Medici later returned, they suspected Machiavelli of conspiracy, so they had him imprisoned and tortured before they finally chose to exile him to his father's estate just south of the city, where he continued to write. Machiavelli was a very compelling author, and I do recommend you read all of his works, but when it comes to his political views and the confusion surrounding what he may or may not have actually believed, we need to take a closer look at two of his texts, The Prince and the Discourses on Livy. Machiavelli is probably best known for the sinister notion that the end justifies the means, commonly referred to as a Machiavellian strategy. But he himself never actually wrote that sentence, and there's a lot more to him than you might think. Let's start with the text that cemented Machiavelli's reputation as a cynic, The Prince. The text is an advisory letter to the leader of Florence, Lorenzo de' Medici, who had consolidated his hold on the city through a power struggle. This is important because it means Machiavelli was catering his advice to a leader that doesn't have a natural hereditary claim and whose rule might be contested by others. This turns traditional political science on its head. Unlike ancient philosophers and most of his contemporaries, Machiavelli isn't asking the questions on how a virtuous leader might achieve the ultimate goal of establishing a virtuous state. Instead, he's asking how a leader, any leader, can achieve his own personal goal of simply staying in power. At the heart of Machiavelli's advice lies the notion that men can't be trusted. They will support the prince when the going is good, but in their course they are ungrateful, selfish and deceitful. They will turn on the prince when danger comes near, or when they sense an opportunity for personal gain at his expense. So in other words, a prince who strives to be morally good at all times is doomed to be removed from power, because he's surrounded by many men who don't mind getting their hands dirty for their own personal gain. So, if a prince wishes to remain in power, he needs to be a political chameleon. He needs to possess political ingenuity. Machiavelli refers to this as virtu, the skills to adapt to circumstances, to do evil when that is called for, and to make your own luck. Continuing this somewhat depressing train of thought, Machiavelli posits it is safer for the prince to be feared than to be loved, because fear, according to Machiavelli, runs deeper than does love. Machiavelli provides several examples of how a seemingly positive characteristic can lead to the prince's downfall, and its direct opposite may save him. Take this example. It's better for the prince to be viewed as merciful rather than cruel. But if he is too merciful, disorder, crime and defiance may spread, which would weaken his position. Therefore, cruel acts may be necessary for the sake of order and obedience and the consolidation of his leadership. What Machiavelli describes in The Prince is essentially realpolitik. It exists all around us. But to simply dismiss Machiavelli as a cynic would be unfair, because he does qualify this behavior as morally bad, and he warns the prince he must only turn away from good when it's absolutely necessary. Nor did he advocate oppressive autocratic rule, something that becomes apparent when we read his other key text, The Discourses on Livy. In The Discourses on Livy, Machiavelli moves away from how a prince could best function in an autocratic system, and instead he explores the benefits of a republican model. He even remarks that while autocratic systems allow their citizens to live a secure life, vivere sicuro, it takes the freedom of a republic that allows its citizens to live a free life, vivere libero, which can actually propel a city to greatness. He based this idea on the successes of ancient Athens and Rome, where the people had been in charge. In the discourses, Machiavelli holds that citizens are free if they are not abused or oppressed and that once this freedom exists, someone ought to be in charge of it to ensure its survival. Since rulers aspire above all else to rule, and citizens aspire above all else to be free, it naturally follows that citizens should be put in charge of guarding freedom. This means they must play a role in government, and that calls for a republic. 
A system like that has an element of conflict and chaos within it. In ancient Rome, the Senate and the people were often at odds with each other, and in Machiavelli's time this was usually thought to have led to Rome's downfall. But Machiavelli disagrees. He feels an element of conflict keeps everyone on their toes and inspires creativity, which had produced some of Rome's best laws. Machiavelli also emphasizes the importance of free speech. A republic, he posits, is effectively ruled by public speech. The people collectively have a better judgment than a prince on his own. They will only be persuaded by a wise and compelling argument. So this effectively guarantees a state based on reason. The Republic, according to Machiavelli, is the best system of government, which he bases chiefly on his view that the people are more prudent, more stable, and of better judgment than a prince. So, what are we to make of all this? Certainly, there are parts in Machiavelli's oeuvre that are contradictory and irreconcilable. Many smarter people than me have tried and failed. But all his works consider the fact that Machiavelli is mostly associated with the idea that the end justifies the means seems wrong, cruel even. After all, Machiavelli argued in favor of a republic with a free people and leaders who would strive to be good. He simply realized that all those things usually come with a pretty steep price tag. And that concludes this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, if you'd like to learn more or cite this particular video, please check the description box below. For now, though, I want to thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.